In the text, Father Bill's family members are used as reference points. Could he be referring to the physical layout of the graves? I copy the grave layout to my notebook next to the poem. This information should relate to the poem somehow. Of course! The sign of the Lord! Some of the graves can form the shape of a cross! Now, if I can only figure out which dates are relevant... Yes, that must be it. Three dawns mean three births, and they're all adjacent to Father Bill's grave. I'm sure I'm close now. I just have to somehow narrow down these to the correct number of digits. from lasting to brief, year, month, day. That's gotta be it.
Yes! Found a written text and a tape in there. Visions concerning my sons are troubling. I've watched them become corrupted with pride, turning their backs on the very foundations of our faith. I've seen great sins committed, unholy acts of intimidation and violence, outsiders brought to hallowed ground with neither reverence nor ritual. <sighs> These are dark dreams indeed. I pray that they never come to pass, lest my soul shall weep tears of blood. The mending is not only a gift, it is a sacred duty, but it must begin in the heart of a true believer. Someone who yearns for change and possesses the dedication and perseverance to achieve it. We shan't forget that in his infinite wisdom, the Lord chose his angel, the Crimson One with no name, as guardian of the Holy of Holies. Only he is poised to understand the struggle of those who are lost, the broken and the guilt-ridden. Be grateful for his sacrifice, for his existence is one of meek servitude. To have no name is to have a shattered spirit. Now I will speak directly to the mender, the one filled with passion and indomitable purpose. I implore you, Mender, trust in your fiery heart and save us all from the darkness. May God be with you. Jeez, Father Bill was nutty. He was right to be worried about Isaac, though. Listen to this, Isaac. This is William T. Price. My visions concerning my sons are troubling. What is this? I've watched them become corrupted with pride, turning their backs on the very foundations of our faith. I've seen great sins committed, unholy acts of intimidation and violence, outsiders brought to hallowed ground with neither reverence nor ritual. <sighs> These are dark dreams indeed. I pray that they never come to pass, lest my soul shall weep tears of blood. I don't believe it. 
Father saw all of this coming. God, have I strayed from the faith? It's not too late to redeem yourself, Isaac. I've met the Crimson One. We're on the same side. Preposterous! No one has witnessed that apostate since Father's death. I've been praying for his return for years. I've walked the sacred path. I've been atop of the cliff where the holy lights first graced Father's presence, yet they elude me, and so does the Crimson One. My faith never faltered, but in his absence I have had no choice but to assume the divine work myself. You believe that you are carrying out the work of the Crimson One? Don't think I can't hear that mocking tone of yours. I will speak of this no longer. So Father Bill saw the lights on a cliff. Was he talking about Parowan Peak? Probably worth going there and having a look. Father... Have you abandoned me? I will atone for my sins, I swear it. God, have mercy on me. Hi, Grandma. Listen, I found something in this storage unit. Oh? What was it? Custody papers, with my name on them. I was hoping you wouldn't have to see those. I need to know what happened, Grandma. <sighs> Sharon was never a good mother to you, Kathy. I know. It was the illness. She tried her best. It wasn't all bad. You don't know the despicable things she and Brian did. Drugs. Violence. We wanted something better for you. Joseph started talking to lawyers, staying up late at night on the phone, trying to find a way, some kind of loophole to get you back. But eventually we ran out of courts to appeal to, and your mother retaliated with a restraining order. And that was it. She had won. I wish things could have been different. I do too, dear. Every day. Now you're getting me close to tears. Let's talk about something else. Okay, Grandma. Hmm. Okay. I'll load it on the Catmobile. All right. I'll have access to the metal detector anywhere now. Guess some graffiti artists like to live dangerously. All right, let's see here. That's better. Wow, 
What a view. So, this is where Father Bill saw the lights. This is where it all began for the church. Not much of interest up here. I guess I'll just mark the point on my map. Wait. It's a triangle. The lights were spelling it out all along. And there's the center. That must be where I'll find answers. I'll go grab the metal detector off the bike. something. I'll mark the spot on the ground. I'll go and put this back on the Catmobile. Handy little shovel. I can dig it. Time for this shovel to be put to use. There was a metal box buried here. Nothing else in there. Moment of truth. There was a whole bunch of cassette tapes in the box. Most of them are in really rough shape, though. Only two of them look even playable. the source is formed by the mind that inhabits it. That's essentially how the so-called mending operates. I also believe that certain objects in the real world can survive the transition. Uh, these things are made of strong materials, often metal. It can potentially be used to create a form of a discrete pathway. However, to do that, an item must be innately imbued with a mutual significance for both subjects. A shared truth. August 8th, 1981. Along the outer perimeter, I've determined that some kind of endothermic reaction is taking place. So it's important to be observant of changes in temperature. Find the source by severing the link. Perhaps I can save them, Jimmy and all the others. Reoccurring dream. I'm standing in front of a huge black hole in a clearing in the woods. There's a man dressed in red urging me to jump. I'm afraid to, but I take the plunge anyway. 
For some reason, I don't think I have anything to lose. As I'm falling, I reach for the parachute cord, but to my horror, there's nothing there. That's when I wake up. I'll just borrow this for a while. All these trees look the same. It's hard to find the exact point on the map. I should be fairly close, though. My god, what is this place? Met. Her. End. Someone left this message here for me.
It's the red scythe flower. Must be hundreds of them here. Intense. Oh, they're making me a bit dizzy. Greetings! You again. Me again. You better have some answers, Crimson One. All in due time. Your friend is being claimed by the darkness. She's standing on the brink of the abyss as we speak. Are you talking about Eileen? Yes. If you wish to save her, you must descend. Why? What is down there? The tribulation. The reflection of the soul. We call it the mending. Who's we? My kind. Are you capable of giving a straight answer? What does your kind actually want? All we want is for you to take your medicine, Kathy. For you to grow and be happy. If that's the case, why were all those people hurt? Lily? Jimmy? Grandpa? You misunderstand. What one wants and what one is able to do are two different things. Happiness is not a one-way street. It cannot be given, only earned. Your grandfather understood that. He embraced it. Wait, you saw Grandpa? Oh yes, right here. He was a tortured soul, desperate for some kind of meaning after losing the light of his life. You. He sought the power below, the vessel of redemption. But Grandpa didn't make it. He failed. How could I succeed when he wasn't able to? He was so much stronger than me, so much braver. Is that what you believe? Perhaps you don't know him as well as you think. But why me? Why are you making me do this? Because you so desperately need it, Kathy. You're haunted by your past, by all these painful memories long forgotten. They follow you like a shadow, pulling you down. They taint your every thought, impulse, and deep desire. It is foul to us. This is crazy. I could just walk away, get on my bike and drive, forget I was ever here. There's nothing stopping you. Eileen. I can't leave her like that. Perhaps she'll be the one who breaks the cycle. <laughs>